I'm here in Western Greece, which is the home of the Corfu killifish, which is a unique species of fish. Um, it's actually quite a small fish. It gets a maximum size of about six and a half centimeters. Um, they live near the surface of the water and they're especially adapted for that life. They have upturned mouths, which allow them to catch prey at the surface of the water. They're actually a glacial relict species, which means that um, they survived the last ice age in Europe. And um, because of that, they retreated to areas um, where the glaciers didn't actually hit. And that means in places in Western Greece. And there's um, two species found here. And there's a sister species also found in the Iberian Peninsula in Spain. The Corfu killifish is classified as critically endangered by IUCN. And there are a number of reasons for this. The Corfu killifish is a habitat specialist and is found in small and very uh, vulnerable habitat, freshwater habitats that are under threat, mainly from uh, water abstraction, mostly for irrigation, also for uh, wetland drainage, hydro picking through the operation of uh, dams, but there's also pollution, for example, from agricultural activities, mostly uh, fertilizers and pesticides. And finally, there's another threat, a biological threat, which is alien species, specifically the mosquito fish, Gabusia holbrooki. This was introduced back in the 1920s in the Mediterranean countries uh, to combat malaria through the uh, control of mosquitoes. Today, the mosquito fish is present in more than 50% of the water basins in Greece. And it's believed that uh, it is a very serious threat for uh, the Corfu killifish uh, through uh, competition for food and or uh, aggression. Zoological Society of London has been working for the last 10 years with the Hellenic Centre for Marine Research, the Institute of Marine Biological Resources and Inland Waters, developing a conservation management plan for the Corfu killifish. This work is part of FishNet, which is a ZSL initiative trying to stop the extinction of freshwater fishes around the world. FishNet is a consortium of non-government organizations, universities and research institutions, as well as the public zoo and aquarium community, um, all working together to try and prevent the extinction of very vulnerable freshwater species and to protect their habitats. Over the last 10 years, we've been monitoring the species in all of its known habitats. And during that period of time, we've determined um, a number of steps that we are planning to take um, in order to try and help protect the species for the future. One of the measures that we're taking is a translocation exercise which involves um, a supplementation. Basically, we're taking the fish from one habitat and moving it to another place um, where the fish already exists, um, but in very, very small numbers. So we're basically trying to increase the gene pool in the hopes that that stabilizes the population in that location. When conducting a translocation exercise, it basically involves catching the fish. And in order to do this, we set up a seine net across the spring area. And then um, two fishers will basically go with a net and make lots of noise and drive the fish towards the seine net. When they get close to the seine net, the two remaining um, people that are, are near the net lift the net up. Once we've caught um, all the fish in the seine net, we then need to sort through them. The Corfu killifish lives with other species of fish in the same habitat, so we need to also analyze the catch and find out which ones are Corfu killifish and which ones belong to the other species. After we've done this sorting process, we then need to count the number of fish that we have, and we also determine the sex ratio, so we ideally like to get an equal number of males and females to move. Once the fish have been sorted and we have enough of them caught, we then bottle them up and we put them in a normal drinking water bottle and fill it with the same water from the spring and add some oxygen in order for them to survive the transport. And then we drive as quickly as possible to the next site where they'll be released. When they reach the release site, we have to make sure that the water temperature is the same in the bottle as it will be in the spring. So we float them for a period of time just to make sure that the temperatures um, eventually get to be the same. Once we're confident that the, the temperature is the same. We open the bottle in an area where there is adequate cover and protection for the fish and let them swim into their new home. In the second translocation exercise, it's essentially very similar to the supplementation, but the main difference here is that we're moving the fish from a site where basically the habitat is a bit degraded 
and moving them to a place that we have been monitoring for quite some time that we feel is much better for them. And this is a location that the fish don't exist at the moment, but the habitat requirements should be met there. The, there is adequate cover, food, um, and water for them to survive, and of course the water quality is, is much higher than in the place that, that we've removed them from. The idea here would be to reintroduce them or introduce them to a new population in a place where they're much more secure than where they currently are. The transfer in the first case, the supplementation action, involved 41 individuals, and in the second case, in the system migration, 50 individuals. And we, this all went very well without any problems, and we really believe that if we repeat this action next year, that is going to be successful in this uh, effort. This long-term collaboration between ZSL and HCMR um, has been really, really beneficial for the species, and obviously the expertise of both organizations has been crucial in order for us to be, to be able to make this happen. Um, we've been working together for 10 years, and over that time, the uh, skills and knowledge of the HCMR, which monitors freshwater fishes throughout Greece, has been absolutely essential in order to find enough research and information and stuff in order to learn more about the fish and allow us to make the right choices. In this field exactly, it was very valuable, our, the cooperation with ZSL, that now dates since 2005. For the first years we have extensively researched the biology, ecology, um, genetics, various aspects of, of Valencia and after all this time we were uh, in a position to actually conduct uh, this conservation uh, work through these uh, translocation actions and in this the expertise of ZSL is very important, very valuable uh, for us. Um, ZSL's expertise comes in where uh, we understand the species, we're keeping them in captivity in our collections and we know what its requirements are in terms of diet and husbandry and, and um, also uh, for breeding. And obviously we move a lot of fish in ZSL so when it comes to a translocation exercise we understand the needs of the fish during a, a, what could be quite a difficult transport operation. We're keeping captive populations of the Corfu killifish both at ZSL London Zoo's Aquarium in the UK and at the Castoria Aquarium in Greece. Having these populations in captivity allows us uh, sort of insurance and a backup plan should there be a major disaster in Greece which wipes them out in the wild. This uh, enhancement translocation actions are it's a pilot program, conservation program, through which we hope to establish viable populations of uh, Valencia in more or less secure uh, spring-fed habitats. This is very important for the survival of the species, basically. But also it's important for the survival of other endemic species in Greece that are endangered. And we hope that with the experience gained through this action, we can apply this knowledge to for conservation work concerning other endangered native species of Greece. The Corfu killifish is a flagship species. It's a representation of a, of a habitat that's very special, but it's also very threatened. Lowland springs um, in the Mediterranean basin are increasingly under threat because of human use. And the Corfu killifish acts as a flagship for these habitats. So by saving the Corfu killifish from extinction and keeping it in its natural habitat, we're actually benefiting a number of other species that are also dependent on those same habitats. So they're acting as a sort of mascot for the lowland spring in Greece.